All right, uh, the first housekeeping thing is just like auto-saving work. So again, thank you to Trevor for sending this to me. This link to me, I meant to bring it up last class, just slipped my mind. Um, but everyone should have this link. It shows you like how to set up your system options for uh, backup and recover. Um, so that's under here if you go to the gear. Um, it is under, it's about midway, I thought, somewhere here, backup, recover, okay? So here are my settings. Um, so I have it set to save auto recover information every 10 minutes. For those of you, I think, Mari, you mentioned last class, you might've been having some issue with getting that folder set up. Um, if you click here on these three dots, you should be able to pick a folder um, on your, somewhere on your machine to save this. So wherever you've been saving your files um, in general, and I know some of you are new to Windows, so actually like, um, I don't know if you think it's beneficial that I talk to it at some point. I, I, I'm so used to Windows, so I don't know like how to describe it, but I know from when I've used a Mac, I've had trouble like locating files and understanding how the system works. I mean, you know, for Windows, it's like you have your drives, right? And I think it's the same as a Mac. I mean, Windows also has built-in places where to save things, so it just defaults to this like documents folder. So you could, in this documents folder, just like right-click and create a new folder and name it Des 400 or something. So it, it's just you, you kind of like create you create folders within folders, I guess. I mean, which I think is similar to a Mac. But um, has like file organization been confusing for you guys on Windows? No. Okay. Cool. <laughs> No, it's fine. I mean, it seems like, I mean, there should, again, there'll be one on one time today. So if that is an issue for you, I'm happy to like sit, you know, kind of explain that for you. But anyway, the auto recover folder, it should def there should be a default, but if it's not in here or if the link has been messed up or something, you can like click on these three dots. You know, I can create a new folder in here called like, you know, I could right click new folder and say like SW backup. and then like select this folder. And now this should update to save auto recover files into that folder. Um, I don't have this backup thing checked. I tend to manually backup my files. Um, I think it de it's default off and I've just never used it, but it's good to know. So what this does, if you guys haven't looked at this link, is anytime you save a file, it will maintain a version of the last save you did. So that means if, you, if it somehow got corrupted or if you made a change that you weren't happy with, you can always like roll back a safe state. So the example they give here is like if you're working on this you know, plate that you're adding a cylinder to, when you save the plate and cylinder, it will save a backup of just the plate. This is the cylinder being the new change. Um, again, I don't have mine checked is what it is. Um, again, that's, that's up to you guys. Now, you can also have notifications that remind you to save. Mine always pops up. I occasionally, I, I mainly ignore it, but because I've gotten used to it. But uh, sometimes it will actually work and remind me. Any questions on setting up save auto recover functions? Okay. Um, the next issue that came up last time, which don't have a great solution for, is I know for some of you on Mac. The delete key on a Mac becomes the backspace key when you're running Windows, which makes no sense because um, you need the delete key for SolidWorks. You can try binding. So supposedly FN plus delete should equal delete in Windows, but I know that didn't work on Trevor's computer, uh, or at least for what you're trying to do at the time. I meant, I meant to try it with something that I know for sure deletes with the delete key, like a segment and a sketch, so that's something you could try. Um, you can also try binding a new key to delete in SOLIDWORKS. That did not work. Did you try binding like a random key, like F12? Okay. Um, so here, let's, let me see if I can do that real quick. So if you want to bind, you go to tools. Gotcha. Yeah, I, 
I don't know, like there is like that, again, there's like this like Mac Windows disconnect that I'm not as familiar with. So there's a chance that like binding that key as backspace. Let's do a test here. I'm gonna search delete. So here, like, again, I went to tools, customize, and then keyboard. You can search for what you wanna do here. So to delete, sometimes it's confusing because there's like multiple ways. So for example, like here's delete and here's delete which I'll be honest, I don't know the two differences with this one, but this one says this is my delete key, so this one should work. If I bind this to F12, do I have to hit FN on my computer? I do. Um, I can click OK and see if this will delete something. So if I go into my master sketch, create a new line over here, select it. So I'm going to hit the actual delete key now just to see that that line tool works. Now I'll select this and I'm gonna hit FN and F12 and see if this deletes. For me, it works. So I know I couldn't bind also, Trevor and I also tried binding his delete key to delete and that didn't work. So maybe try binding it. I don't think F12 is bound to anything and it's kind of near that area. That's why I recommended it. So you can maybe give that a shot. Okay, awesome. So, okay. So I think it will work then. That's my advice to you Mac users. I think that's the best workaround. Unfortunately, it can't be the delete key, but just, again, it, it, F12, I don't think it's bound to anything and it's in the same area. If that's like a weird key or whatever, pick something else like you could do Q. Uh, that sounds good. Um, now, kind of like a deep dive solution, which I talked to Daniel about, is remapping your keyboard. I'm sorry that I can't help you with that. I'm happy to like look at it with you and like try and put our heads together. Um, I, I, my only concern there is like, I don't know if like you completely remap it, if that goes south, like how to undo it. So that's my big fear there. And that's where I recommended you guys either talk to Daniel or go to an Apple store, but I did find a, a program that allows you to do that. Uh, Scott asked a question last week about if you accidentally use the master sketch, can you replace that sketch? So the question is, can you take a sketch, like could I take this Revolve and replace this sketch with another one within the feature? Based on Googling, it does not appear to be possible in SolidWorks, which is kind of baffling. And there's a lot of people that are saying, why isn't this a function? Um, the best workaround that I found is if you right click on your body, on your name here, and go to tree display. I mentioned this to you guys last time. You can click on show flat tree view, and now instead of having the sketches be like consumed and be under, like hidden beneath the feature, it just kind of unpacks your whole tree and spreads it out. So hopefully everyone can see this now. So like this revolve is using this sketch, but it is no longer hidden underneath it. So you could in theory, let's say that you can't name things the same thing in SolidWorks. So I'm just gonna call this master one. But let's say this happened to be your master sketch. You could always rename this master right click on it and make it visible. And so your master sketch would then be located underneath the feature, but at least it's still there and visible. So that's kind of a workaround, but just try and avoid that mistake if you can. Okay, so that covers housekeeping. Are there any questions on any of that? Okay. Um, okay, so the main thing I wanted to show you guys here so, okay, firstly, I, I just showed you guys how to like expand this. This confuses me. I'm used to uh, tree display, whatever the non-flat tree view is, because then the sketches are here. Like that's what I'm used to seeing. Um, I know last time, like I kind of set you guys up. So actually here, I'm about to do this thing that I take for granted, but I'll show you guys. There's something at the bottom of the tree is this like rollback bar. So you can always move this to revert to different stages within your tree. So this is really useful for like going back and reworking a model. Um, you can do this by dragging. You can also go back here. You can right click and you can say roll back and that will jump the bar up there. So I feel like last time I set you guys up, I showed you the sketch, like how to bring the sketch in, how to size it. And then I kind of turned you guys loose on the map at the master sketch stage to kind of like trace your bottle as if it were InDesign. Um, again, my advice 
While there's no right or wrong way to trace this, you can always do the like the radii later as fillets. I encouraged everyone to maybe just trace the curvature of the bottle as close as they could get it. Like some of these like smaller fillets in here, um, I did these later as, as feature commands, not within the sketch. Um, but uh, reasoning for that is I think it's, it's it, that's, that's like the small fillets and the small details you can leave later, but like the major design curves, I think it's better to put in, in your sketch for the bottle. But at the end of the day, again, there's no right or wrong way to do that. I think it just for this project, it made more sense, I think, to trace like the bigger curves and stuff. Um, but basically, I just wanted to like look at my sketch with you guys to show you like what I had to find. So things you should notice right off the bat is everyone should have, and, and just to give you a heads up, I just... I'm hoping to keep this talk brief on what I'm showing you what I did. And then I'm gonna go, then we're gonna take a break to then, um, or sorry, I'm gonna also show you guys how to do a full scale print, but then I'm gonna take time with each of you to just look at your, your master sketch and your bottle. Basically to give you credit, but also to just check your master sketch, we can look at it together, give everyone like a set amount of time um, just to cap that. So that's where this is going. Um, so everyone basically, if we're looking at my sketch as an example, everyone should have their width defined, right? And if you recall, and I can go get the calipers again um, if we need them, but you do a mix of like looking at the image, but also measuring your physical bottle and plugging those measurements in here. You can see I tra treated my push up a little bit differently. Like I still have this baseline down here. I didn't like quite trim it here. This is possible to do in your master sketch. It doesn't have to be like all one clean contour. You can build them as separate entities. Um, Again, there's no like right or wrong way to do that. The truth of the matter is for me is like the push-up was kind of a later addition. Um, but the way you can correct this and build this in is like as you convert entities, right? As you copy from your main sketch, you can pick and choose what features you're copying. So again, if we're looking starting at the bottom of like what I have defined, so I have the width, I have the push-up as a separate entity, I have this curvature not really defined on my push-up, right? That doesn't matter as much. Like I said, I encouraged everyone to have their like curvature traced. Here I have the radius defined. This line is defined as a horizontal. These are defined as tangencies. Again, we have these like little boxes that tell us the relationships they have. So here now I have the overall depth defined, bringing it to the bottom. But when it comes to this curvature, this is blue, I don't have this defined. I just have this kind of tracing the sketch, looking at what it looks like not actually having a value to it. What is defined is the tangency. This is tangent to this, this is tangent to this, this is defined as a vertical line. Look, if I delete this vertical line, you're gonna see the line should turn blue, maybe. Maybe it has another relationship. Oh, this is keeping it vertical. And now I realize like this is kind of a feel, and, and, and I think this next stage in the project, yeah, so, okay, here's a distinction for you guys, right? There's different ways to dimension things. Okay, so I'm gonna add a width dimension to this. So I'm gonna select my center line. And now if I select this line here, that dimension, it gives it kind of a parallel relationship. Because I have, I selected line to line, it's telling me the distance between the two lines. If I change that dimension and I select this line, and now instead of selecting this vertical line, I select this this, ver this anchor down here, this ver vertex. Now this line no longer, it should be able to move at an angle. Do you guys see that? Because it's now, it's defined to this point, not the whole line. So there's distinctions like that in dimensioning um, that become important. But more often than not, like if I, if you create a line in here, like if I just draw a line vertically, you'll see this yellow box with the, with the vertical um, symbol. It defaults to vertical, so it should do that. But, but some of these like defaults of like vertical, horizontal, those are good things to have in your model. It's less, it's kind of like less dimensioning that you need to do and it constrains the model from kind of like going all over the place. So again, the most basics being horizontal, vertical, tangent, uh, perpendicular, those are some of the things you want. If I 
actually go back to this. So now this line is no longer vertical. And I kick this angle out. Now to give that example again, if I so now that this line is actually at an angle, they're not parallel anymore. If I select this line and this one, anyone want to predict what's going to happen? So I'm trying to dimension. So I first pick this line. And you can see the dimension defaults to the length of the line. But now I want to select this next line as my second thing. Now that they're no longer vertical, if I select line and line, one line and a line at a different angle, what do you think the dimension is going to be? It's going to be an angle. That's what it defaults to. You see that? So now that's no longer space, that's an angle. So again, that's a reason why it helps to have the definitions of horizontal and vertical. It is, it is a trial and error thing, though, which I guess, I don't know, I feel like if I'm a student and I hear a teacher say that, it's like, well, great. You know? <laughs> um, but again, I'm, I'm hoping that the, the way this project is designed is that you'll learn, depending on what your redesign is and what you want to do and change, you'll learn to change the dimensioning so that things don't move or blow up. So again, one of my advice, one of my advice is, advice, an advice, a word of advice that I have for you guys is to everything above the neck finish, which again, as a reminder, is everything above this ring, to just have it be fully defined. You can see here that mine isn't fully defined. There's a lot of blue in here. Um, if I just start like defining like the width of things, it can start to lock this down. And sometimes that, that, that's, part of, that's part of it, is you just start dimensioning things. And really, like if you dimension from the origin, you'll start to lock a lot of these things down. And the reasoning for this is most of the design should change below the neck finish, unless you want to change the design of your, um, uh, of your cap which is not a requirement, but it's possible if you would like to. Um, again, when you select lines, it, it just defaults to dimension the whole line. So now I have everything dimensioned except this top portion up here. Right, so now my whole top part is pretty much defined. Whenever you have something blue, you can always click and drag it to see what isn't defined. So here it, it's sliding left and right. Control Z to put it back where it is. So now that I know that it's sliding left and right, I can pick the origin and pick the line and define that left right. Or I, the other thing I could do, if I see that this, this anchor here is, is black, I can just click on this line to find that width. So now I have my whole top portion defined. And it's really just, there was no rhyme or reason to that. It was really just like selecting the origin and selecting points until it's all black, it's all defined. Um, Again, sometimes there is, you do need to do a little more rhyming reason, and that's more the bottom. And like, you know, for example, here, if we look at this model, what is the easiest thing for me to change based on what's blue and what's black? Oh, the width is easy to change. I would agree with that. But in terms of like, if I'm changing the design of the bottle, like, What's, what would be, like, what's an easy change based on what's defined and what's not defined? The neck area, right. I can, because this is blue, I can easily drag this all the way down, right? And because it's a master sketch, if I uncheck this build and go to the first revolve, it revolves that. Which, again, this is how this is supposed to work. So that's kind of a key in your redesign. I mean, again, the intent of this project is with the redesign is you would then revisit your master sketch, look at what changes you're gonna to need to make and change your dimensioning to, to fit what your redesign is, to leave it blue or to like delete some of the dimensions. So like for example, like I said, I did this without rhyme or reason at the top, but just to make a point, you know, let's say that I wanted to make, this is where you, you turn this grip area to like open up the nozzle Let's say the client said, hey, you know what? I want this to be a lot wider so that it's easier to grasp. Okay, well then, like, what would be the first thing you guys would, first things you guys would look at if you wanted to make this wider? This area right here on the bottle. Well, what, so what line is defining that area? Is it this line? Is it this line? 
Correct. Is that clear to you guys? Am I being like way too basic or does that make sense? Just trying to emphasize the point, I guess. So okay, so you can see that, okay, this line determines how how wide this thing is, right? The diameter of, of where where the you turn the nozzle. Okay, so now you know the line that needs to change. The client wants it to be wider. So what I might look at is what, what is defining how far this line is from the center of rotation? Well, there's this dimension, which is determining the bottom. There's this dimension which, is, dimension, which is determining the top. So let's say right now it's it's a half inch because it's this doubled. Let's say we want to make it three quarters of an inch. Well, I could overall diameter, I could do 0.75 divided by two. But you'll notice it just kicks the top out, right? So a smarter way to dimension here, if I know that this whole thing is changing, that, you know, they might say, you know, keep the angle, the angle's perfect. We just need it to be wider. Instead of dimensioning the top and the bottom from the center, if I know that needs to change, it might make more sense now to just determine maybe the angle, if they want to keep this angle the exact same. And now hopefully I can just take this top and I can just kick this out and we can move that wider. But of course now we see this other change happening, right? So this is, this is kind of the trial and error aspect of it. So again, let's say we want to make it 0 0.75 divided by 2, 0.32 or 3.75. Now we can see that this is getting goofed up here. So what do I need to do then, if this is happening? Is I can look at what's constraining this and delete these and try and rebuild them. So for example, I can see that this is no longer tangent because this is being fixed. Well, I can take this dimension and delete it. I can select these two and add um, a relationship of tangency to them. And now if my boss or my client is fussing on the width of this, with one click, you know, with one dimension change, within reason, it, it falls apart at some point, I can change the width of, of this uh, nozzle area. Does that make sense? So you kind of figure out what it is you want to change, and you redimension your model based on those changes to make your life easier. And again, that's what we're building towards. That's what the next stage of this project is. So now again, if I uncheck this, go down two pegs, there we go, now I have my wider area here. Cool, does that make sense? Okay, um, I am going to recap how to do a full scale print. I'm gonna close this. I don't have any of these changes again. So I'm assuming everyone's at slightly different stages right now. Um, and again, my intent after this is to go one-on-one, -on -one, look at your model with you, to A, give you credit, B, give you feedback, make sure you're on the right stage, right step for the next part of this project. Um, I need to do some math, but I think we could do 10 minutes a person, should be enough time. Um, if we run out of time, there will be time at, later in class to do more one-on-one, -on -one, so don't worry. Um, so, a quick show of hands, well, like what stage is everyone at? So everyone has your model built, right? Anyone not have their model built? Okay, in CAD. Okay, um, who still needs to print their model out or do a full scale kind of like export out of SolidWorks? Who has not done that? Okay. Okay, that's fine, no, that's cool. And no, it's, and then, Okay, so about four of you still need are, are at the stage where you need to do the full scale printout. So Tom and Alexis, you both have a sketch and a thing. Awesome. Okay. So okay, I, um, for those of you that still need to print it out, I don't know if you want to follow along with me here or if you just want to watch me do this. So again, Alexis and Tom, I'm glad you guys are prepared. I'm sorry, this is a bit repetitive. I guess it's repetitive for everyone because we went over this last time. Um, but if you guys want to follow along, I invite you to open your files now. If you just want to watch, that's cool. Tell me if I'm going too fast or too slow. But the way to do this is you want to go to File, New, and you want to select Drawing, okay? This is how you export a full-scale, one-to-one view of your model. Um, you will see a dialog like this pop up. I'm assuming most of you are going to have a model that's going to fit on 8.5 by 11. If for some reason you don't, the next default printer size you can go to here is 11 by 17. 
So here I want a piece of paper that's, and you can see it defaults to millimeters, but I can always type in 8.5 inches, IN, 11 inches for getting my portrait size. I can click OK. This is my piece of paper here. It's going to default to having me put a, my model in here. So if you have your model open, it should suggest it for you. If you don't, you can always click Browse and navigate to the file. Everyone still with me? Let me know if I'm going too fast. But you can double click on your model here. Go over, it's going to give you a rectangle of where it's going to exist. You can click here. And once you have it placed, you can just hit escape to get out of that. Because um, what it's going to do, that this is for later for project two, you can easily create orthographics for it. But here we just need a front view. Um, so when you click back on this sketch, if you go down here, it brings up, again, this kind of like property dialog, uh, property manager. If I scroll down, if I click on use custom scale, you want to go one to one. We want to see what this looks like full scale. This is, again, another common design practice, uh, especially with SolidWorks, is it's easy to be in like what I call SolidWorks world, where you're on your CAD, everything. You're going off of like known measurements, but it really makes a big difference when you see it full scale in person. And again, to use a, my real world example, it's like we'd be like designing grill tools in SolidWorks. We would occasionally just do a full scale print out of the grill tool just to look at it. And there were times where like the handle would be really long or really fat. And it's just like you don't catch that until you see it full scale. So this is good practice to have. So you want to sw switch the scale to one to one. Uh, and really, that's all the only change you need to make. Um, other things you can do within here, you can change the view of the bottle with this up here. Really, you want the front view. You can change the display state. My advice to you guys is to just do the line work for what we need. And honestly, at this stage, you could just go file prints. Um, so again, for those of you that need to do this, um, and again, for project one, at some point, you guys will all need to print this uh, to pin up for next for next class. Um, so it may not hurt to just do this anyway now. Uh, but if you go file print, obviously the one thing you want to make sure that you do, um, and I think everyone's print dialog is slightly different, is you just basically want to make sure it's full scale. So you don't want to have this like manual scaling checked. You don't want to scale to fit page. I think I just saw it just before I clicked away from it. Um, where is this? Page setup. I don't know. This is where I'm seeing it here. You don't want manual scaling, and you don't want scale to fit page. You want it to be 100%, obviously, because we're trying to get a full scale print. Um, and again, this is something that happens a lot. This is kind of like SolidWorks workflow, where you print out the model, you have the full scale, and you just like sketch on that front view just to change it slightly. Uh, maybe review it with whoever's working with you. Um, so that's one thing you can do now. You could then use this as an underlay if you want to go analog. For those of you that have digital sketch capability, you could, instead of printing this out, you could go file Save As. And you could go to JPEG. Now the key here is under Options, you want to switch it to Print Capture. Now, I think it defaults to Screen Capture. This is going to come out at a really low resolution. You want to go to Print Capture. You can change the DPI here. You want to be at like 200 or higher. 200 or 300 is my recommendation. Um, you also want to match here the paper size. Or I think it'll default. I don't know. But anyway, A portrait is what I think I have. That's funny. That's uh, the Euro oh, A4 is the European 8.5 by 11. So you know what? I think you can ignore this. Here, let's just let's test it. Let's see what it comes out as. Um, so basically, you can save out this JPEG, bring it into a digital sketch program, and, and sketch over it. Again, my advice for you guys for the redesign is to pick a feature and emphasize it. So to show you like what I did, um, let me go to my documents here. So firstly, I just saved out test. OK, it did come out at landscape. So I would have so if you're saving out that JPEG, 
I would switch this in this options dialog if you have it. Portrait, I would switch it to portrait. I'm going to check what A comes out at. I'm going to see if A is 8.5 by 11. Um, I think that's 8.5 by 11. Yeah, it is at 200 dpi. Okay, so A was, I think A matched the paper size I had. Um, but to show you guys, so I did mine digitally. I'll show you my redesign. It's in, should be in here somewhere. Nope, that's the. Here we go. Um, again, I just kind of picked this neck area and just kind of made it bigger. And again, we want to think about keeping the scale about the same. So if this neck is gonna grow taller, maybe the ball will grow shorter, then the base should grow wider, right? A little bit fatter here. I made these like curves a little bit bigger. You can see I maintained the neck finish, but I kind of blended this curve to match the width of the cap. Um, again, from here, you can see how like, there's like this disconnect here in design. So that was like, that's another thing you can do is try and get, find something that you can kind of like streamline. It's really open-ended though. This is not graded on design. This is more just to get you guys to do the exercise of redesigning something. Um, I mean, hopefully you come out with something you like. And again, my advice is to pick something and exaggerate it, streamline where you can, um, but change what you're comfortable with. I changed the cap a bit in the sketch, but you don't need to worry about that. Um, really then the next stage would be to bring this back in just like we did last class and start to trace that. Um, so, the way that that works, oh, I guess, sorry, I should, I should post up here. Are there any questions on what I just went through on how to print full scale and on the redesign? No? Okay. Um, so once you have that redesign, here's what I would do. I would go back in here. Well, firstly, I would save this as a copy. So go to your master file. I would say save as. It'll give you a warning because that warning it's saying, hey, the file is being referenced in your drawing. If you create a save as, that drawing is going to reference this file still. Um, so remember I used the analogy of InDesign last time where InDesign is pointing to a link? So basically, this is like InDesign. So like this drawing is pointing to your file. And now if I'm about to change the file, it's kind of like InDesign saying, hey, the link is about to update and change. Do you want to do that? So if you don't want to have this point to your new drawing, you could always just save this and then close it. So I could call this Sriracha DWG, hit save, close it. And now when I hit save as, I won't get an error. So here I'm going to say save as Sriracha redesign two. So that's the first thing I would do is save a copy of your bottle. Then using this tree, this like rollback bar down here, you can roll back up to your master sketch. I'm gonna hit Alt V so I can see my sketch here. Alt S to create a new sketch on the front plane or create a, click on the front plane. It's like, this is the piece of paper I wanna sketch on. I'm gonna click on sketch here. And now this is just like we did before. I'm gonna click on the sketch picture In here, I'm going to go to my redesign. And again, it's just like we did before. I'm going to drop it in back here. And now I'm going to rescale this to be about the same height as this bottle. And again, kind of align the neck finish to where I think it should be. And really, the neck finish should be your guide of how big to make this, this sketch. So here is my neck finish. I brought the cap down a bit. Again, you can change full image transparency to about midway. Um, but now it should, again, try to do it in a new sketch. Once you have a new sketch, you can drag it up. And now when I go to edit my master, I have this sketch reference under here. I can start to like, and again, if you see things that are moving that you don't want to move, 
This is the trial and error part of the project where you'll figure out what needs to be fixed, maybe what needs to be um, deleted. Like for example here, I don't want this top one to move. I can see what it is. I have a line connecting them. That fixed it. So there will be like, edit, there's a little bit of editing the sketch. And again, I'm gonna get more into depth here later in class. This is kind of like the second demo. But um, for those of you that already have your drawing, this is like what you'll be working towards now at this stage. I'm kind of giving you guys a sort of like a heads up. So like I can, I can push this width out wider. I can change this overall depth shorter. And then like I can pick this point, drag it down, you know, kind of push this out this way. If I don't want this to like kick backwards, I can always have a reference line up here, make it vertical, have it be for construction so it's not defining everything, anything, and then have it be tangent to this. And again, I can kind of control how far out this is. You may have to delete lines like, or actually, no, sorry, this is not a deleting line. This is, uh, or maybe maybe you need to add, I don't know. But this is just to give you an idea of like what, what you're doing. So here's like click and drag, get this out to about here. I can always define it too, right, if I want to. Again, if it's jumping around, drop that dimension in. Um, but now when I exit out of this master, again, if I built my sketch properly, you guys can see that the redesign kind of matches the sketch a little bit better. So that's what we're working towards. The last thing I want to show you guys is that you want to match the mass properties, okay? So you save a copy of your model. I'm going to reopen my original. So here there's a, there's a solid bodies folder here. Not every, you may not see this if you have only one body in your tree. This is kind of important, I wanna show everybody this. Um, if you go to your gear here, I think this is where it is. Okay, wait, no, sorry, give me a minute. I'm mind blanking where this is located. It was in there. Okay. Yeah, it is in the gear. If you go to the gear, you could also like right click on here and do hide show tree items. Um, which actually I should have just stayed there because it showed it took me right to it. <laughs> so you right click here and go to <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I'm sorry guys. Uh, right click on the it brings up the gear. And I don't know where we are. Okay, feature manager, that's where it is. It's about in the middle. Um, anyway, if you go to solid bodies, it's gonna default to automatic. I strongly suggest everyone just switch that setting to show. The reason for that is it's useful to have this folder here to go look at bodies. So here I have the cap and the bottle. So the last point I want to make is again about volume. And if we're, this, this project is simulating a redesign of, of structural packaging, volume is very important. So I don't want the volume of both the cap and the body. I just want the volume of the body. And in this instance, it's okay. It can be solid. It doesn't need to be shelled. We're just looking to record a value and match the value, right? So when you're on this, under the solid body folder, if you click on this, you can go to tools and then, um, okay, sorry, give me it. For, okay, you all have my hotkeys, it should be Alt L, will bring up math properties. That's what I typically do, so that's why I don't have this me memorized, but let me try and find it in here. Is it edit? Um, I thought it was under tools. Should be like tools, measure, evaluate. There we go. It's under tools and evaluate. 
Or again, with my hotkeys, it's Alt L. L is in line. So you select the model here, Alt L. Everyone should record this volume here, this 31, in my case, it's 31 cubic inches. Your redesign should also match that. This is part of your grade for project one. And again, as I walk around with you guys now, we will figure this out together. Um, but again, I'm just giving a heads up for Alexis and Tom who are already here. Yes? Great question. No, I'll give, you, I'll give you guys like a flexibility of plus or minus one cubic inch, which is huge. Like for industry standard, you probably want to be like plus or minus 0.1 is like large. For you guys, I just want you to get the practice of trying to hit a number. So as long as you're within, if this is your bottle and you're at 31.0121, as long as you're either at 30 or 32, you won't lose points. Does that make sense? And that should... My opinion should be easy, might be kind of hard. There's gonna be a little bit of pushing and pulling. Um, ways, we'll talk about ways to do it in the second half of classes. I, mean, I am already getting ahead of myself, but I just wanna give everyone plenty to do now that as I walk around, I hope that no one's feeling like held up. Um, but again, my goal right now is to look at all of your guys' models to give you credit. Look at your master sketch to try and see are there errors. If you wanna talk about your redesign, talk about what might be easy to change, what might be good to change. Um, I'm going to record your volume so that we're both on the same page. We can both write that down. Um, and I think we're going to start from here. There is another aspect of this, like I said, where we're going to create another either larger or smaller size. It's up to you what you want to do. But we're also going to agree on what that new volume is so that you know what to hit. And that we're in agreement now, so there's no surprises in the next class. Cool. Any questions on anything? Okay, so I'm gonna try and budget roughly 10 minutes a person. You're, this is like in-class work time, so whether you need to like save that drawing out, print it out, and start your redesign, great. If you've already done that, awesome. You can start pulling in your new sketch and tracing it, trying to match that with a copied file. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where we're at. Hopefully, I was recording all that hoarding thing again. Okay. Um, so again, some of you already went through this. Uh, one thing I just want to address. Uh, good question. I think some of you already answered this, but like, why go through this effort of like making a sketch, modifying it when I could really just go into my master sketch here, drag some things around, and change it, right? So there are two different kinds of design. There, are, uh, sorry. There's many different ways to design. In this class and with SolidWorks, it is possible to design within SolidWorks. There will be times where you will be like moving and playing with sketches without having to go analog or make a hand sketch. That step, there's two aspects to it. One of it is printing full scale. Um, and of course, again, that's, that, as I mentioned, is it's a good check-in, right? It's easy to get out of scale in SolidWorks when it's on your computer screen. When you see it full scale printed out in front of you, it can change the way you see things. It can change, you can quickly realize whether something's too big or too small. So that's the reason for that requirement. The hand sketch is again to also just represent and get through that practice of modifying something by hand, you know, whether it's sketching on it with a client or just like getting a fresh look at it. It's again, it's a different aspect of the redesign and it's a good habit to get into or a good practice to know how to pull it out of SolidWorks modify it and bring it back into SolidWorks. So that's why there is that requirement. Um, so let's say you have your master here or your reverse engineered model. Again, it's not a requirement to have all of these like grips. I didn't really fully get into it. Some of you chose to build that in, that's great. Uh, so don't worry about it. If your cap is just a simple revolve, that's all that's required, okay? Um, so let's say you have your model here. Well, the first thing that I would do is save a copy for your redesign. So I'm going to call this Sriracha, and I'm just going to call it Redesign 2. Or you know what? I'll call it Redesign 3. So I don't know what that is. I don't want to save over it. Now, again, this is all the process you guys will be doing. So everyone sort of exported it out. I'll show you my, I think I already briefly looked at my redesign sketch, it's right here. Like I said, I streamlined some stuff, I made it a little wider, I, made, I exaggerated the neck. So 
to bring in the new sketch, I'd roll back to above this feature. I want to make sure my master is visible. You want to make a new sketch here on this front plane. And again, we're doing the same thing we did before when we brought in that photo, the scan of the first bottle. I'm clicking on this little icon up here. Um, it's called Sketch Picture. And I'm bringing in my redesigned sketch. So this maybe represents a scan or something digital you did. But it's bringing in the, the raw JPEG that you sketched on, again, ideally on something full scale. Now, my advice on alignment is to align the neck finish. Did this get like rotated slightly? It looks like it did. Um, sorry, I'm going to redo this because it looks like my got my the drawing got rotated a bit when it came in. That's really weird. Um, you can everyone see this, how it's like slightly askew? I don't, I honestly don't know why it's doing that. Like, do you see how it's like going slightly up here? Here, I'm just gonna. Are you, um, Oh, good point. Maybe I'm not. That might have been it. <laughs> that was pro that was it. Oh my gosh, my brain is not working. Thank you, Trevor. <laughs> um, okay, and now we. Uh, so yeah. So yeah, you bring that in just the same exact way that we brought in the last photo, right? And so uh, my advice again is to align the neck finish. That's the thing that should not change. Or you can, you know, align the center. There we go. So. Now, there was some confusion as I was going around looking at all your master sketches, guys, of like keeping things in order. And I realize there's all these like weird stipulations, but I, they're there for a reason, okay? So let me just suppress this, meaning, meaning to say, uh, make it not exist for a minute. When I'm grading your guys' reverse engineer model, I'm checking for three things. I'm checking that you have your, ref, at least to begin with at the start, I'm checking that you have your reference picture in a sketch. I'm checking that you have your master sketch, and then you have a feature that's referencing the master sketch that's a copy. If you somehow, and I think I caught most of you and I helped you guys fix this, but if you somehow have that all as one, like you're gonna lose points on that. This is again, this is again, this is just to give you guys best practice, like how to go about setting up your file, okay? Um, so again, in this instance, when you're bringing in your new sketch, please bring it in. When you're bringing in your new hand design sketch, bring it in as a SolidWorks, in SolidWorks as a new SolidWorks sketch, okay? So that it doesn't end up being consumed or buried um, in the master or something. The reasoning for having the hand sketch be separate is so that you don't accidentally double click or drag it or edit it as you're working on the master. When you have the hand sketch brought in, I advise having it under the master so you can align it. Once you have it aligned, you want to rearrange this. You do that by clicking on the sketch with the hand that's hand drawn and dragging it, provided you're not in the edit mode, dragging it above the master. Now the reason for that is now when I go to edit the master, I can now see the sketch behind it and I can now modify my master to match it. This is where again, there's gonna be a little bit of trial and error based on what you have defined. Ideally, everything above your neck finish is defined and it's not going to move. But now, so now I'm going to go and just try and edit some of these things. So firstly, I'm going to bump this out until I hit the overall width. I'm going to make it a little bit shorter. 
I'm going to make this radius a little bit bigger. We're getting it close. It doesn't have to be quite exact. Now you'll see some of these things up here are getting messed up. That means my model wasn't fully defined, okay? Um, it looks like, and, and this is where if you notice errors, you can reference your old model, your, your original model, see what's going on. But here, like for example, that jumped out too far, so I can redefine the, that, um, this was like kind of the cap width to this. To make sure, you know, again, to hold its width dimension to the center line. Now I made some changes here, okay? So we're looking at my sketch. Here's the neck finish. I wanted this part of my design. I can drag this down. But I wanted this to align with the outside of the neck finish. So firstly, I'm going to have to make some changes. So one of the things I can do, I could entirely delete this arc. Or here's another trick that I do is I'll make a line. And you can trim. I can break the relation by trimming the, this part of my arc between this new line that I created and this neck finish. Again, it's all about changing the relations that you have in your sketch. So now I want this part of my arc to actually align with this outside of the neck finish, because that's the intent on my redesign. So I create a line here. I want it to be just for reference, so I'm making it for construction. I'm clicking on this, and I'm making it tangent. It's giving me an error. I'm not entirely sure why that can't be tangent. Oh, because it's probably tangent to something else. So I'm clicking on this. I was telling it to be tangent to two things it couldn't be. It's still tangent to this line up here. So you can, if you're changing the definition of lines and the relationships it has, it's helpful to click on it and see what those relationships are and check them if you're getting an error. So here, I'm going to make this tangent to this line. It's still giving me an error, I think. I'm going to delete this line here. All right, what's going on? Um, let's try it again. So another thing you can do if you're trying to add a new relation is drag it till it looks like the relationship is close. So in this case, I'm dragging it till it looks like it's close to tangent. And now we're clicking on both of them and clicking tangent, and now that's how it works. So sometimes you need to like drag it yourself. Sometimes the line won't automatically update on its own. I mean, it should, but like if it's slightly off, like I said, it helps if you drag it till it's close. It helps it SolidWorks figure out what it is you want to do. Um, so now I'm just going to build in these new lines here. I'm adding new geometry into my master sketch. And again, like you want to check some of these things. So I dragged this and this jumped way down. So that tells me that that's moving, that I need to define this. It helps to define everything to the origin. You can define points with just two dimensions, x and y. And now that point is no longer going to move. And now I'm free to kind of drag this a little bit to where I want. It looks like this is a... Uh... No, that's not. Is this... I'll be honest, I'm not quite sure why I can't drag this in a bit. I feel like it should be able to. But it might be the two tangencies that are locking this right now. Yeah, that, that would make sense. Um, so like right now, I'm trying to drag this point here to the right. It's not letting me because this is defined to a vertical tangent. Both of them are. So they have, and they're tangent to each other. So to, in order to drag the line to the right, you can see it moves up. So sometimes there are just like geometric relationships that don't change. If I wanted to change that, again, to break this relation, it's like fixed here and tangent to this here. One thing I could do is I could delete this vertical relationship, delete this line, and drag this down now. 
and now this will allow me to bring this in. It's like getting a little more height on this. And so now what I would need to do, again, this line is just for construction. I would then need to put a vertical line in here to get to this point. Some of these things are just, again, you, you, you kind of play with the sketch. What happens if I delete this or why, why won't it let me do this? So in that instance, I was trying to drag the point in and I noticed it was moving up. I realized that the arc of this line needed to start lower in order to allow me to do that. So now I'm closer to my sketch. Um, so again, that's kind of the changes you guys are making. So you're now tracing this. So now I can exit out of my master sketch. If I scroll down now, I'm probably gonna have an error here, okay? That's probably because I, that's mainly because I added features and I deleted features. Um, again, the master sketch is kind of a best practice and is um, a way of working that makes people familiar with your model. They know that if everything's pointing to one sketch, they can change something in that sketch to modify something below. The master sketch is not as good when you are making major changes, deleting things and adding things, okay? It, it is really designed more for tweaking. Um, that said, it's not bad at redesigning stuff, it's just not as good. When you add and delete things, you just need to do a couple extra steps to go in and modify the sketch and the feature to match that. So firstly, you'll notice these errors. Again, when I'm grading project one, I don't wanna see that you will lose points for these like yellow exclamation marks or red marks, okay? So your model should be nice and clean. Um, when you have an error, if you hover over it, it tells you what's wrong, or if you right click on it, it'll tell you what's wrong. Um, and here it's saying it's, it, it has not been updated because there's things that are conflicting. Now you can see here, it's, it's trying to rebuild the model. It's, it's telling me with colors what's wrong. And right, right off the bat, these two red things it's saying there's a conflict there. It's trying to do two, it's trying to, it's having things tell it to do two different things. Um, how do I phrase this? It is like over, it, it cannot figure out what it needs to do. It's either being told too much or there's missing information. Um, so one way I'm gonna start, I, I know that I modified this arc. So I know this is still in the sketch, so I don't wanna delete this but I also modified this line, so I can start by deleting this line, and I can see if this arc will now jump to where it is on this model. So I'm gonna hit delete, and you can see that because that line is no longer constricting where this arc is, this jumped to match the new arc and where I put it. Did everyone see that? So I'm gonna undo this. I added new features to my model, okay? Sorry, I'm gonna just pay attention for a minute. Um, I added new features to my model. When I go in to edit my old master sketch, or sorry, I edited the master sketch. Those are the new features I put in my master sketch. Now I'm editing the feature sketch that's pointing to the master sketch. Right now, it's a, there's a conflict, which is represented by the red lines. I know that I still have this same arc in my master sketch. I did not delete this. I know, however, that I moved it to the outside. It's no longer coincident on here. They're no longer touching. So as opposed to deleting this arc because I know I moved it, it's still in my sketch, I'm gonna start by deleting this red line. And when I delete this, it should resolve the conflict and you can see my sketch then update. It jumped to where it needed to be. The reason that there's a conflict here is that this line is being told by the master sketch, they're pointing to each other, it's saying this line should be here However, in this old sketch, it's still being attached to this line up here. So by removing that attachment, it allows it to jump and move. So these are some things you will experience when you redesign your sketch, is specifically if you add or remove things in your master sketch, you will get an error in your rebuild. And it's helpful to remember what it is you added or removed and what you kept the same. Whatever it is you removed in your master, when you go to your feature sketch, you either want to delete that or look at what's red and maybe delete some of those relationships. Again, there'll be time after this one-on-one -on -one, and I'll be able to help on an individual basis. Now, of course, the remaining thing, if I hide all this, is I can't revolve this because there's this missing gap in here. It's not a closed contour. Now I can go back in. I can hide this because it's kind of confusing. But I can take these gray, 
these parts from my master sketch and put these back in. So it's a matter of just selecting these. I held shift to group select, and I can click convert entities or copy. Now if I exit my sketch, I get my redesign. Does that make sense? Um, let's see, the rest should rebuild. Okay. And again, I'm happy to help on one-on-one -on -one with your guys, some of your needs. So here, you, here, like this exclamation mark, it's missing a fillet. It's missing an edge, probably. Sometimes it helps you out. There's this like, it's kind of hard to see. I'm going to turn this to this view. Do you see this red dotted line? It's saying, hey, there used to be a fillet here. Where did it go? I can delete this out of here, and I can reselect this edge to bring that fillet back in. Sometimes maybe you need to add a little more fillets if you added like new geometry, like maybe within here, whatever that might be. Um, so now here's the next, so that's like the first stage of the redesign. Here's the next stage. Well, firstly, save when you have your model successfully rebuilt. Um, you guys don't need to shell your models. In fact, I might, art, like, I might encourage that you not. Uh, for volume checking, shells can be a, a worse comparison. Comparing a shell to a shell is not as accurate as comparing a solid body to a solid body when it comes to volume, because we're concerned about what the bottle holds, not the thickness of the wall, if that makes sense. Again, that's more of a structural packaging thing. Yeah? Correct. So that's a very good question. So, okay. Um, The most accurate way, and I'm not going to make you guys do this, but if you're absolutely concerned about accurate volume, you would shell the bottle, and you would build a solid body within the cavity of the bottle that would represent the fluid, and you would pull that exact volume. And that exact volume, if, it, if this is a 17-ounce sriracha bottle, that solid body should be 17 ounces. Um, I always get confused with like mass and because there's like the density of the sriracha and the ounces, the weight, and it's more like milliliters, right? It's more a volume measurement, if I'm not mistaken. So there is a lot of nuance there. That's a really good question. Um, uh, I, I do some of my freelance work with Studio 111. They do structural packaging. They have like a formula where they pull all of their measurements off of solid bodies. And they have a formula based on, they have like a standard wall thickness and a standard material density. So like you can reference a table that they like, they have like an Excel table that you could reference. You can say, okay, I'm making a bottle out of uh, HDPE. Um, and there is like a conversion formula of like what your bottle mass properties are and what that would translate to if it were a cavity. Does that make sense? It's this kind of like, it's their shorthand. And that solves the challenge of having to, um, solves the challenge of having to like A, shell bottles all the time. Um, eventually they get shelled, but like as you're working to make sure you're still on volume. The reason why pulling volume off of a shell is not as accurate is if you imagine an orb, that can hold a lot of volume with very little um, wall space versus like a really wavy bottle would have a lot of wall space but could hold the same volume as the orb. The orb is just more efficient. So if you're comparing the volume of a shelled orb to a shelled like crazy wavy bottle, the crazy wavy bottle is gonna have more volume but they could hold the same cavity space. Does that make sense? Let me, okay, let me put it this way. Correct. Yes, hold that thought. The surface, so if in this product, the most accurate way to do it would be to measure the negative space. Make sense? Okay. In this project, I encourage everyone to leave their bottle as a solid body, not as a shell. If you were to shell your body and then take the mass of it, that's more of an indication of surface area because you can think of it as you're taking the outside surface of the bottle and thickening it, right? So 
an, an orb, a ball, is the most efficient form of volume, right? You can pack the most amount of volume into an orb. Uh, how do I phrase this? Like, in space, if you put liquid, it wants to go into a ball because that is the most efficient way for the liquid to conform itself. So if you're looking at the surface area of a sphere, a sphere has the greatest ratio of volume to surface area, as opposed to if you take that water bottle right there and imagine it has a bunch of like waves coming in and out of it, that is a very inefficient ratio of surface area to volume. Does that make sense? So if a shell is essentially just the outer surface thickened, measuring the volume of just a shell, not what's inside, literally just the wall thickness, is not an accurate measurement of what the bottle can hold. Yeah, they are. You can run. Go, go for it. You're fine. Correct. That's like the most accurate thing you could do is like build a volume within a cavity. And so that's that, it's a great question. And that's why I'm explaining now for this project. It is best to pull the volume on a solid body, not on a shell body. Does that make sense? Cool. Um, all right. OK. Um, any other questions on anything? So this is my new redesign. I encourage everyone then, and this is what I'm going to walk around and record with all of you now, or after this discussion. So here's my original bottle. Again, I care about the volume of the bottle, not the cap. And this is another requirement. Your guys' cap should be separate. So at the bare minimum, if we're talking grades, I'm going to turn this into a full revolve. This is, this is the bare minimum. You can ignore everything below the blue line. This is the bare minimum of what I'm expecting for each of your CAD files next Friday. Everyone should have a sketch with a reference photo in it. Everyone should have a master sketch. Everyone should have one revolve pointing to the master sketch. Everyone should have one revolve for the cap pointing to the master sketch with no errors. That's how you get. Um, I can't guarantee that that's full points because I'm going to like look at your master sketch and make sure you don't have like lines overlapping. I'm going to like see is it well defined? Like, do arcs have tangencies? These are things I'm looking at. So, like, if you've been listening to me and, and, and Trying to do what I advocate, you should. Your grade should be fine. Um, yeah. No. Yeah, that's a good question. No, they don't. Not all the arcs need tangencies, and of course, there may be instances where they shouldn't be tangent, right? Um, I'm just looking for like, does I'm mainly looking is the master sketch like, is it relatively robust? Is it relatively well defined? Like. I might go in and just like see like I, this like let's say this is your model, Mari. I may go in and I may just be like, okay, what happens if I turn this to 1.4? Does anything blow up, right? And if things seem to rebuild, like that's a like those are some some ways I might test to see is your model like robust. If you guys want, we can agree on that. If if you guys want a fixed parameter so you know what to check in your model. You should be, I should be able to change the overall width and overall height of your bottle, and it should more or less rebuild within reason. You shouldn't have anything too crazy to change. And, and I'm not going to like add 10 inches to it. I'm going to add like at most maybe a quarter inch. I don't know. So if you guys want, that's I'll write that down right now. That's a good deal. Um, all right. Um, So that's one thing I'll check to see the robustness of your model. Okay. Um, okay, again, sorry, slight tangent there. But anyway, the reason I'm opening this old bottle is to check this body here and to say, again, tools, measure, evaluate. Oh my God. 
mass properties. Or again, if you have my hotkeys, it's alt plus L as in lion. Um, and so now I see here the volume is 35.78. I'm going to like, I, you know, on my own notes, I'm going to write that down. Okay, it's 35.78. Now it's going to be 300 plus or minus one cubic inch. And again, I'm going to go around and record this with all of you so we're all on the same page, so there's no surprises. Um, now when I look at my new design, so okay, I need to be either at 34 or 36. If I go here, I, I already know off the bat this is going to be way too big. Alt L, I'm at 41. Okay, it's not too far off. So this is the next stage, right? The first stage is tracing your redesign, fixing the errors in your rebuild. Again, if the errors will be because entities will be missing or added. When you then go into your rebuild, uh, the next stage then is matching the volume. So here I see I'm at 41, obviously it needs to shrink. The quickest way to shrink volume is to just make your bottle more narrow, being revolved. So even though you have your sketch in here, and I'm gonna turn this back on, it's okay, I fully expect your, your redesign to not 100% match your hand sketch, right? I can pull this in a bit. Need to make sure that my uh, push up doesn't stick out too far. And now I can do the same thing. Alt L, make sure you're selecting just the body. Okay, I came in far too much. 30.31. So this is again, the reason for this, not only is it just to simulate a real life project, but it's to get you, if, if your master sketch is robust enough for you to change the volume, then this makes your, your life easier. If your master sketch is not well-defined and each of these steps is, is like a struggle, it, it, this is kind of designed to like encourage you to make a well-designed sketch to make these steps easy. So again, the way you make your life easy is by changing this value and seeing, like looking at the sketch, right? Let's all look at my sketch. As I push and pull this in, what changes? Only that line changes, which is good. That's all, that's all that I want. Um, I guess this moves up a bit up here. If I didn't want that to move, I could define it. I forget now if I was too big or too small. I think I went too big. So again, this is, and this is what the master sketch is designed for. It's designed for these tweaks. So let's see, I'm at 33.88. I'm really close. I can go back into my master, make this 1.55, and that should, that should put me perfect, 35 on the nose. Cool, that's what we're working towards. The other way to change it, you can play with the push-up a bit. Um, ideally, Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, I, this is my two cents. I'd probably spend a little bit more time on this model. Like this bottle, if I'm, from a design standpoint, it's a little bit tippy. I'm not gonna grade your guys' design from um, an aesthetic standpoint. The way that I'm grading the design is that I'm looking at, does it have a push-up? Does it have the next, does the next and I'm looking to make sure you have no problem with the label surface. Basically what that means is wherever the label goes on your bottle, make sure it's created with a straight line. So those are the design requirements, that you have a push-up. If this were a student project, I might put a comment that the push-up's getting like a little small and the bottle looks tippy, but I probably wouldn't take points off. Let me rephrase that. I would not take points off. You hit the requirements. I'm not going to make this like some scary gray area for you guys. As long as you hit the requirements, you're good, yeah. It is. Now, if you turned in a bottle that was like, the entire bottom was round, and then it just had a push-up that was like maybe an inch big, okay, I, like that I would take points off for. Like, I think, like, and I think we can all agree, just try and be reasonable, right? Like, it, it should look like a bottle, look like you can function as a bottle. If there's any question about that, feel free to text me or email me and be like, hey, this is my redesign, is this too weird? I'm happy, I'll get back to you as soon as I can with that kind of thing. Um, the final thing we're gonna do 
All right, so I got this. I'm going to save this now because it's proper volume. The other requirement is to now make a, a bottle with a new volume. Okay, so in this instance, it's going to be bigger. And this is the other volume I'm going to calculate with all of you. Again, so there's no surprises. You have clear targets to hit. I'm going to say larger. There is, unfortunately, a bit of math. But... Pre-cap, not pre-cap. I'll write this on here so that it's in the video recording. But again, I'm, I'm going to walk around and help you guys along. We're going to agree to this now. I'm basically giving you guys two number targets to hit. That's the bottom line, and that's good enough for what we're trying to practice. But we're trying to keep it accurate. So I know that my volume is going to go to the other side of my paper. It was, we're just going to call it 35. And I know that it's a 17 ounce bottle. So that's the ratio. It's 35, the number is 35 in SolidWorks world, it's 17 in real life. I want to find what the new value is in SolidWorks world to a logical real life size. So maybe a 32 ounce Sriracha bottle. You solve for the unknown, so it is um, this times this, this times this. But another number is you want to multiply this <laughs> by 17 over 1, this by 17 over 1. No, that doesn't make sense. It's the unknown. 32, oh my god. Yeah. Correct. You have a third bottle to make. Everyone has the reverse engineered bottle, then the new redesign that matches exactly the volume. Then you have a third bottle, which is a brand new volume. I will do this math with you guys, like one-on-one. -on -one. I'm just explaining what we're doing. I realize this is kind of besides the point, and I'm like totally bombing this right now. But basically, you're, we're solving for the unknown. This is the value. This is the value of cubic inches in SolidWorks. This is the value of the Sriracha bottle in real life. Okay. This again, I'm trying to simulate very loosely what you guys might do to redesign a structural package in real life. This is something that happens all the time, where you design a 16 ounce bottle and then you need to make a 32 ounce version. You sometimes need to do a bit of math. The math doesn't matter. I'm more just giving you guys targets so you learn how to, within CAD, hit those targets. I'm just showing you the math that I'm going to do, and it, yes, arguably it's taking longer. Yeah. It's whatever you guys, you can choose. I, I, like when I meet with each one-on-one -on -one with you, we can pick, but yeah, it, it probably will be two times, roughly. I mean, honestly, if you guys just want to do that, I'm fine with that. If you, this is maybe too complicated. Like, if, I mean, the, again, the reason I bring this up is you may need to do this one day. If you're doing a structural package and you design, you know, for a client, you have 16 ounces they want, or 17 ounces they want 32, you may need to do this math, whatever, you can look it up solving for an unknown. Um, but if you guys want, you can literally just take your volume and double it. That's okay. Wait, wait, wait. Um, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm on this trail right now. Correct. Three CAD files total. This is what we're doing. You're multiplying it by the value over the x here, so these cancel out, right? So essentially, you get this is the formula. It's 35, whatever your SolidWorks world number is, multiplied by whatever it is you want to get to. So in this instance, it's 32. 
First you multiply it, then whatever that equals, you divide it by 17. And yeah, that math, it is gonna be roughly twice as much, right? It's gonna be something close to um, 70, right? Is what we're hitting. But Mari's right, it's probably simple to just double it, that's cool. Um, uh, so, so what you do here, so I have it saved as redesign larger. Again, just to let you guys know what we're targeting. If I go here, body properties, or no, sorry, Alt L. Um, 35 cubic inches. Again, if we go with my plus or minus one cubic inch, that means we're trying to hit anywhere from anywhere from 69 to 71. So again, if you save a copy, it's going back into the master sketch. And obviously then to make this bigger, you're probably gonna make it taller, not that tall. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, no, you can't because then the neck finish would change. So you need to do it as the master sketch. And again, this is all it's it's this is all done for multiple reasons. One, the simulation, but two, this this is just yet another level to absolutely ensure that your master sketch is well built and well made. That a change like this, in theory, should be easy. It should, and let's see now whether mine's well made or not. Like, let's change this to eight. Let's change this to three inches. Like, obviously, okay, there's some weirdness here. Again, I'm not necessarily grading design. Like, I might, it should have some semblance to the sketch to some degree. You don't have to make a brand new sketch. This is really just an edit. But okay, way, way too big, right? So this is back here into the master. Okay, let's see, bring this back down. I, I think you guys get the point. It's really playing with these numbers right now. Let's see what this got to, got us to. There we go, 75, what did I say? Okay, it's still a little too big. So I'm gonna change this now. I'm just gonna bring it shorter. So just for your guys' reference, when you're playing with volume, you will get the most volume change by drawing width-wise based on a revolve. You will get the smallest volume change by drawing height-wise. Um, it is possible to remove volume with the push-up. I'm not requiring that you guys be so accurate, but when you are trying to nail that accuracy, the push-up is the best place to like take out or add a little bit of volume because it does not change the overall design. There you go, 71, that matches the requirements. I like that, Mari, I don't know why I didn't think of it. If you guys wanna just agree to double your volume, that's great, saves the math, saves. It's like, it's kind of, this is relevant to why the preforms the way they are because of the neck finish stays the same. You can blow one bottle up to like 16, you can blow the next one up to like 42. Using the same preform? Uh, I don't think it's a good question and a good assumption. I believe to do different ounces and preforms, it, you can't do both a 16 and a 32 ounce from the same preform because the 32 ounce bottle won't have enough plastic. Right. Or the vice versa would be you would have too much plastic in the 16, which is when it gets to like structural packaging those fractions of pennies, they don't want to be paying for that plastic. Right, okay. Gotcha. Cool, does everyone know what we're working towards? Um, okay, so let's look at this. I'm gonna talk about project one and then it's, and then honestly at that point, the minute I get your guys' volumes, you're either free to go or I'm happy to help one-on-one. -on -one. So now is when I do want everyone's attention because this is, in my opinion, this is critical. For, you, for all of your grades. Okay, so firstly on box, let's see, I guess I haven't decided how to do this yet. Um, I think we're gonna go under here in homework. Yeah, this is exactly how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna do this right now. What's the next date? The eighth, right? I can, no, I can't do math. I was gonna say I can add seven to today's date, but no, I clearly, <laughs> my brain doesn't work. Um, February 8th. So everyone, and I will put this all in an email so that it's absolutely clear. But I'm going to say um, by 12 noon on the 8th, everyone should have three CAD files in here, okay? 
if you guys want to look at my, and this is again, this is where I'm fired, brimstone, this is where I mean, I'm super strict on deadlines. Um, and again, this is tough love for your guys' own benefit. So you learn, uh, the analogy I make, you know, next weekend, or next Friday is a good example. Those of you that have interviews, you know, if your interview is at 120, like, don't be walking out of my class at 119, leave the class at 115, make sure you're standing out the door, you're ready to walk in, right? You don't, that way if somehow you miss it or whatever, like, you want to be ready to go. You want to have your portfolio ready. If you walk in and say, you know what, I don't have it. Like, you're not going to get that job. And, and so if I can, like, instill that in this class by basically being strict on saying the, the product must be just turned in on time, then hopefully you don't make that mistake when it does really matter, like, with an interview. So, in this February 8th folder, each of you should be uploading three models, three CAD part files into here. One is the model redesign, sorry, one is the original model, one is the model redesign, and then the other one is the double volume of the model redesign. So that's represented by these three photos in here. Whether you want to zip it as a file or just put your name in each of the three files, I don't care, what I, that's, that's fine. Do that by 12 noon. I do, I, I set it in the syllabus. I need, I say, no Is it worth four points? 10% will be taken for every 10 minutes late. It's, I'm super strict, and again, it's all tough love, guys. So if your model is uploaded at 12.10, the highest you can get on that project is a 90%. It's graded out of 15, so 0.9 times 15, I think is 13.5. That's what you would get. That's the highest you could get. I, or I will, it'll actually, it'll more likely just be a, blank, a blanket subtraction of 10% is, is how it works. So is that absolutely clear by noon? So it's slightly different. It's not 1 p.m. It's by noon. I will put I will put this all in the email. Now to make it more complicated, that's just the upload. What you're going to bring into class, and it looks like some of you already have this, you're going to have the full scale printout of you're going to have a full scale printout of each model. Again, in the syllabus, it's represented here and here. Most of you have the full scale printout of this. Redesign, and then whatever sketches you have. And again, I'm not necessarily grading sketches, I just want to make sure you did it. Again, it's all for the semblance of this like kind of um, simulation of redesign. I realize you could easily go in and just like, I could have just like gone in and dragged my master sketch and modified it. But no, I want you guys to just have this practice. Uh, I talked about this at the beginning of class, I'm going to up late. The way critique is going to work next Friday, we're gonna pin up, I'm gonna have each of you pin up your full scale drawings with your sketches. And we're just gonna look at them. Please have your bottle with you too. Um, and we're just gonna compare the full scale to the bottle, to the sketch, just talk about some of the challenges. It's not necessarily a design discussion as much as it is a process and solvers discussion. Um, that pin up portion might be kind of quick. We're gonna look and compare your full scale printouts to your bottle in real life as if it were a, a critique on like, um, like with a client, just like saying, hey, did we translate your bottle well enough? Um, then the second portion of the critique, which might be a little bit longer, is I'm gonna like look at each of your CAD files, maybe just the redesign to, to keep it not so that it's not too long and boring. I'll probably open each of your redesigns and just like look at your file structure and critique it to the class saying like, this looks good, maybe I would have defined this. And honestly, it's open to dialogue and discussion, like if you guys have questions or stuff. Does that sound like a plan? So if I, again, again, if I look very closely at this grading structure, so again, you have the three CAD models, full-scale printouts and sketches. So the five points out of 15 for parametric modeling, that's the fluid master sketch. That's the stipulation I said I'm gonna add I'm going to change the master sketch slightly with like a, adding a quarter inch or taking a quarter inch away. Hopefully your model should rebuild. If there's an error, you're going to lose some points there. So if you want to check it yourself, you should be able to do that. If you were able to like build these three bottles, these two new bottles easily, chances are your master sketch is fluid. Okay. Then I'm going to check volume accuracy. This is what we've agreed upon. I'm going to write down the number. 
You know, I have kind of a kind of license to this. When I bring it down to the model, I'm going to go and I'm going to look, is it, 40, is, it with, is it either 39 or 41, somewhere within there? If it is, great. Full points on that. No points lost. Model integrity, I'm just going to look at, like, you know, again, this is where, like, did you, if you didn't do the three sketches, if you did it all as one, this is where you'd lose points. If you have errors in your rebuild, this is where you're going to lose points. And then finally, the structural packaging, this is kind of like the design aspect of it. Do you have the push-up? Did the neck finish maintain, stay the same? Do you have a clean label surface? Is that absolutely clear? Cool. Questions? That's OK. If you guys, uh, the printouts to pin up and look at, if yours like, that's really just to have like a stand up kind of like in person critique as opposed to me sitting at a computer. That's how I prefer to do critiques. Um, it also gives me an opportunity, I'm going to collect those. It gives me an opportunity to write notes and comments on a sheet and hand them back to you when I give you back your grades. So, so the, the printouts don't need to be pretty. If there's some print or text on it, that's fine. I mean, if it's crumpled up and covered in coffee, I might tease you, but I'm not going to take off points. For that. Cool. Any questions on anything? Um, when you get the volume on your bottle, make sure it is of just the bottle, not the bottle and the cap. Otherwise, it'll be wrong. So if you're in SOLIDWORKS and you click Alt-L because you have my settings, or if you go to Tools, um, Evaluation, Measurement, whatever, Mass Properties, you want to make sure that you click on just the body and not have the body and the cap. So you want to look in this top box up here and make sure that there's only one thing listed and that hopefully it's the body that's highlighted in blue. Does that make sense? Because if you have the cap and the body and that's what you're targeting, your volume's going to be off. Cool? Okay. 